also, um, if you're wondering what the hell this thing is, so am I. I haven't really figured it out. But this is going to be my entry at Sword in the 12 pound sumo division where weapons are not required and the fights will take place on an open plat raised platform arena with no sidewall protection whatsoever. So they are banning all form of spinning weapons and even most particularly dangerous lifters, flippers, and hammers that can throw bots over three feet or have anything with a tip speed of over 20 feet per second. So I decided to basically look through the makerspace, find some random garbage to throw together with some Harbor Freight drill motors that I happened to have lying around, and this was the result. It was built over the course of about five or six total hours of effort for the mechanical elements and less than an hour for the electronics. Part of the point of making this bot was pretty much just to show what you can accomplish with really basic tools and not even really needing to have a detailed 3D model of your whole robot. I mean, like I said, I threw this together in six hours. The only parts of this that I actually designed were the 3D printed parts uh, beforehand. Everything else was just stuff that I found, so like drilling even some of the holes in the metal I did with just a standard cordless drill. I did use the drill press for or a manual mill ultimately for a lot of them because it was just easier but even without access to one even just using like a digital caliper and a cordless drill i could have accomplished the same thing it would have just taken longer so just goes to show that if you really want to get into combat robotics you can do so very inexpensively and with very basic tools so here's the underside of the bot as you can see, it's fully invertible. Forward, backward, well, reversed, but otherwise it still works fine. So, uh, powering everything, I have a five cell LiPo battery, which I showed in my safety video, 1300 milliamp hour. Then I have this RoboClaw 2X30 amp, which is super, super overkill for this. And the two motors on either side are simply the $20 often on sale for $16 Harbor Freight drill motors that are like 900 RPM 18 volt motors. So running them off an 18 and a half volt nominal LiPo is perfectly fine. And the RoboClaw can more than easily handle their fairly high burst currents, but very manageable running current for just a 12 pound bot. I also have this random hinge thing, which I'm hoping to maybe attach like a wedge attachment to, but I haven't gotten around to making one yet. All in all, this bot is considerably underweight. I believe it is under 10 pounds right now, so I've got plenty of weight to add some sort of wedge thing to it. So if you're wondering what the hell are those wheels and how the heck are they attached to the drill motors, they're these guys. Uh, I decided to order a couple of the Actobotics random parts kits that they were selling for like a super reduced price. They basically were like, hey, we'll give you like $40 of stuff for like $10. And so I bought two of those and in both of them I got sets of two of these off-road red wheels. And they have like RC car style tires that are stubby and I thought wouldn't have very much traction, but they've been pretty good with what little testing I've done on my relatively smooth vinyl floor, so I don't expect them to be easily pushing bots twice their weight, but they should be adequate for a robot that I put together with only free parts that I already had other than the battery. So on the back of these, they have a 12 millimeter hex and a hole that is for an 832 screw. Um, I actually just drilled that out for a 5mm screw because that's what goes into the end of these drill chucks. Here's a closer look at one of the Harbor Freight drill motors outside of the bot. Um, I had a number of these from doing a different project where I actually mounted these to a platform with four casters on either corner and two caster wheels in the middle, one on each side powered by one of these drill motors each. able to move my weight and the weight of other people around just using these drill motors so they actually have like a stupid amount of torque for their size though they did tend to overheat in like three minutes but in any case uh, I've locked the torque clutch by just driving a crap ton of set screws into all the holes where ball bearings used to be with the spring retention mechanism 
Um, there's a couple different methods for accomplishing the same thing, but this is the one that I found to be like incredibly reliable. I had screws that were too long on this and I just dremeled them off afterwards, but on um, the ones that are in the robot, I have set screws that are correct to pitch, but also too long, so I just kind of uh, carved away some material where the uh, set screws were sticking too far into my 3D printed mounts. So on the end of these drill chucks, there is an M10 right hand thread for the outside portion, and then an M5 left hand thread in the center. And that's to make it so that when the drill is in operation, the chuck will never actually loosen itself, whether you're drilling clockwise or counterclockwise to tighten or loosen screws or drill holes, etc. Um, so you pretty much just need to make sure you never lose these left hand threaded screws because they're kind of a pain to find anywhere other than included with your drill. Um, so I have these 3D printed adapters, one in PLA just to test and then a final one in nylon which I have on the actual robot. And these have a 12 millimeter hex on the output and then just a clearance hole for the M5 screw to go through. So it just fits through really easily. Um, and I basically just loctited the crap out of these M5 screws and then I took these and I threaded them onto the M10 as far as I could go using uh, locking pliers to hold the shaft in place while I did this on the real ones because there was, or the, rather the amount of force it takes to backdrop these would be overcome by the friction of uh, tightening the thread on. Um, these I have a keyway grounded to them because when I was using them on that chair robot it was impossible to get them to uh, stay on with the method I was using for those wheels, but for these, since I'm using this full thread, it doesn't matter to have a key or any sort of engagement like that. Because uh, this screw pressing on the end prevents this from being able to torque out because it would have to push out. And so by thread locking this and forcing it to never be able to turn again, it pretty much just forces this to stay on the whole time as well which is the same way that the drill chucks are retained anyway. So electrically this is very simple because the uh, Roboclaw is a dual channel motor controller. So I just have uh, two receiver cables going to it from the receiver, one for each channel, the left and right motors. And uh, I have my channel mixing done on my transmitter for this, but the Roboclaw also has a like, mode that can be turned on through software where it will actually do channel mixing for you if you don't have a fancy transmitter. And then I have the same exact type of receiver that I was using in Division, except this is the one that came with my transmitter, so it doesn't have the right angle connectors. And then I simply have a 3D printed battery box that I have two M8 clearance holes in for these M8 uh, T-nut mounted screws. And then 3D printed mounts with uh, quarter 20 tapped threads printed into them which I have screwed on from the top of the bot, or bottom, I don't really know. It's pretty invertible. Honestly, I might just flip this thing upside down and run it like this in sumo, because it's not like I have to worry about hammer bots, most likely. If I do have to worry about them, I can just flip it upside down and flip this, and even if I have a wedge on it, it'll be hinged the other way and it'll work fine. So yeah, that's a quick overview of my bodged together bot. I don't really have a name for it at the moment, so feel free to leave suggestions in the comments. Otherwise, I'm either going to call it Bodge Bot or Horror Freight.